Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. If you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. Streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. Level up your listening with Bose Quiet Comfort Ultra Earbuds and Headphones with immersive sound and world class noise cancellation for a not so silent night. Visit Bose.com slash Spotify to shop sound that's more than a present. Hey, you are listening to Oh Crap Parenting with me, your host, Jamie Glowacki. This is a podcast for conscious parents who drop the F bomb a lot. Hey, hey, guys. Welcome, welcome. So today, I'm super excited, believe it or not, because I'm talking to Eileen Steinberg, and she is dubbed the Lice Queen. We're going to be talking about lice today. So prepare to get a little bit itchy. <laughs> Let me introduce you, Eileen, and then you can say hi. So I'm just going to read her bio, because usually I edit the bio, but I love this bio. So Eileen is the founder and CEO of Center for Lice Control, a company on a mission to eradicate head lice in the U.S. through educating the public about the prevention, detention, control, and treatment of lice. This company has educated thousands of kids and parents, school staff, sports team, pediatricians, and their nurses, camp employees, and more across the U.S. about lice. And they offer a wildly popular lice treatment without any pesticides or harsh chemicals. Eileen has 20 plus years of experience in treating lice infestations, and she has personally checked or successfully treated over 30,000 heads for lice. She started removing lice while working at an overnight camp owned by her pediatrician, who later referred her to families that needed help. After seeing a demand for her service, Eileen started a home lice removal business, and in the late 2000s and later the first lice treatment center, Lice Lifters, near Philadelphia. In less than two years, Eileen has helped grow Life Lifters into a multi-state company with 10 franchisees. Franchisees? Is that how you say that? She sold the treatment centers to pursue her passion to educate communities about head lice prevention and reduce the stigma of lice outbreaks with confidence. Okay, this is great. I am laughing because I just can't believe we're going to do a whole podcast on lice because nobody wants to talk about lice. (laughs) So welcome, Eileen. Um, Do you have anything to add to your bio before we jump in? Thank you for that great introduction. I tend to make people's heads itchy just by talking about lice. (laughs) So if you are itchy, it's because you care. And that's why. (laughs) Or because you've had lice and you're like, (laughs) because you've had it or you're in fear of getting it. And truly, you know, my mission is to not only educate, communicate, eradicate head lice, which is the tagline on my logo, but also to reduce the stigma. Yes. Because the reality is, while lice is gross, we can't change that. While lice is socially unacceptable, it's not a medical issue. And because it's icky, because it's gross, and because it's really hard to get rid of, and there's multiple reasons why it's so hard to get rid of, it has a really bad rap. And the reality is you get head lice for all the right reasons. All the right reasons. Okay. Because I think I think anything that makes us itchy just has like, it's ill, it'll get it off of me, you know? <laughs> but of right. course there's like, there's such a stigma that like it's dirty. So tell us all about it. What do you, what okay. do you got for us? So, so where the dirty comes from is completely unfounded. Way back when, you know, over a hundred years ago, there were people like my mother used to tell me stories that people that had money could afford a nitpicker. Oh, okay. And that is where the word comes from. A nitpicker is a person that picks nits. Knits are tedious, so... Right, you know, and there's and tiny and you have that, right. Okay, I never um, thought of that. <laughs> people that couldn't afford that didn't have help getting rid of lice. And in many cases, people lived with it. So the dirty component to having lice is because people couldn't afford to get rid of it. 
Oh, it's always a class issue, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, it's the same now. Yeah. Because I have a service. It's really not inexpensive to go into a salon and get treated. And it can range all the way up to $500 a head. Right, right. That's not attainable to everybody. Right. And there are people that do struggle with getting rid of head lice and they've had it a long time. It's not because their house is dirty, because that's a myth. Head lice is not in your house. And we'll get to that in a bit. And it has nothing to do with clean or dirty hair. If you go back, how long have we had shampoo to actually wash our hair? Right. So shampoo might be two, 300 years old, quite honestly. Yep. But it's not like, you know, 400 years ago, you went into a store. <laughs> there was no CV. <laughs> you know, there were no yes, right. pharmacies that you could go into, maybe an apothecary. So clean or dirty hair has nothing to do with it. It really has everything to do. It's, it's a completely social situation. Okay. So you only get head lice from two things, really, from your head touching somebody's head that has it. And by head, I mean hair to hair contact. Okay. Or sharing a hairbrush. Okay. So how does it spread so wildfire? I mean, it just say, okay, so if you guys haven't had lice yet, you're going to get lice. Like just your kid's going to come home from school with lice. I can promise you. But it seems so rampant in schools. I can't imagine kids are touching hair to hair so much. So if everybody that is listening that has kids, if they just take a step back and watch their kids on a play date or watch their kids on the playground Mm. and watch them play or watch the siblings interact with each other, their heads touch constantly. Okay. If you look at pictures, what do we do when we take a picture? <laughs> yeah, lean you put in. your arm around somebody and you lean right, in. Right, right, right. I guess I was thinking just kids in a desk, right? I guess that's what most people think. You don't think of like their actual interactions. So kids are at a desk most of the time during the day. Mm-hmm. And this actually brings up a really good point because kids that are at a desk and my mentor who he was probably one of the big reasons that They no longer send kids home from school with lice. Okay. And he basically says that kids don't typically get lice in school. They get it at home and on play dates. Okay. And the reason for that is because kids are sitting at a desk. But there are more times now in our educational setting that kids are encouraged to get up and explore things in the room or do math projects or science things. And when kids are away from their desk and moving around and interacting with each other, it can happen. Years ago, I went to a back to school day at our school where they invited parents to come and sit in on the classroom. It was during National Education Week. And I went and I was sitting with a couple of other parents in the back of the room. And everybody knows what I do. I'm very popular in my circle, (laughs) as you can imagine. Right. And We're sitting there and there were these two adorable little girls. I think it was second or third grade. And they were best friends. And they were, you know, the clusters of the desks were in five. So the way their chairs were, they were directly back to back. And while we were observing the kids in class, they were sitting at their desks. But these two girls, they ended up their chairs were really back to back and they were leaning on each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the back of their heads were touching each other's heads. So, so it's probably not school, but this school, because they're with other kids, you're going to be going, you know, you're, I'm sure you whisper to your best friend at lunchtime, you're on the playground. Okay, I got you. Right. So it's those interactions. And the other way you get lice is from sharing hairbrushes. Okay. Which should not happen in school unless it's picture day. Right. And so hats, not hats, huh? You can paint the scenario that you get lice from a hat. You could paint the scenario that you could get lice from a sofa. And they're two really separate things. The way you would get lice from a hat is if somebody's super, super infested Mm -hmm. and a hair follicle with a bug comes off and it ends up in the hat. Okay. They're not going to the hat. They're looking for a place to lay their knits. That's their job. Okay. And there's nothing on that hat to lay their knits on, which is why the house does not have head lice because they don't lay their eggs on our stuff. But we'll get to that later. 
but lace are not all over your house when you find out you have lice. Um, this feels like it. <laughs> it's, it absolutely. Our, our imagination is a really wonderful and powerful thing. And yeah, you can really imagine they're everywhere. But the reality is that it does come from head to head contact and it comes from all the right reasons. Because so right reasons, that's the phrase I was, I was thinking when we first started the conversation, you said all the right reasons. And I was like, ah, this might be a stretch. You know? <laughs> so what are the right reasons? I'm going to wow and impress you with okay. the reasons. When do our heads touch? They touch when we lean in to take a picture. Right. They touch when we pick up our toddler and they put up their head on our shoulder right. and we bend down. I used to lay in bed with my kids on the pillow together. Yeah. And you're laying on a pillow together, your head's rolling together and you're, you sit and you read a book. So it's love and connection. They spread through love and connection. <laughs> exactly. And it used to, centuries ago, it meant if you had head lice, it meant two things. It meant one, you were healthy. Okay. Because if you didn't have lice, means your blood system or something's not right. Okay. And the other is it meant you were a leader in your community. Okay. Because you got close enough to somebody else that had lice. I call them my frequent flyers, you know, the kids that hug. Okay. Kindergarten, first grade. Those kids are huggers. You don't want to change that behavior. No, you always, you hear about lice in elementary school way more than like middle school or high school because of, yeah, they're like on top of each other and touchy feely and hey, exuberant. Oh, that's funny. I never thought of that. Little people are space invaders and it's important (laughs) for them to be space invaders, right? (laughs) That's got to be a tagline of yours somewhere. Little people are space invaders. I have a lot of taglines. Oh my God, I love it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they do. They get into your space. They don't know boundaries. Yeah. And same with elementary school kids. As we get older, we get more protective of our personal space. But when you're little, that's how you learn to trust. And that's where you find your social self. So with that, here's another tagline. (laughs) Only the sweetest people get head lice. Aw, I love that. This is helping me reframe it because I was like, you're not going to convince me. All right, I I got a better one for you. (laughs) So there was a statistic done years ago from another lice company that said 90% of moms get lice from their kids. We don't want to leave dads out, but dad's hair is usually much shorter. Mm -hmm. So their target is much shorter less for lice, longer hair, more of a target. Yep. And they have different interactions with the kids. They pick their kid up and they put them on their shoulder and they lay their head and dad doesn't have long hair or, you know. Mm-hmm. So knowing that statistic, when two or more kids get lice, 90% of moms get it. When moms come into my salon, they are either they've treated already and they couldn't get rid of it. So they're here like throwing in the white towel, please rescue me, I surrender. Or they found out that they have it or they're sent home from school and they come right here. Here being I tell? Can I tell you, so the funniest story about my son and his first and only case of life. (laughs) So I think he was in preschool and he and I co-slept and I'm a single mom. At the time I was bald. I occasionally shaved my head because I get tired of hair. So I literally had no hair. And we would sleep on the same pillow, cuddling all the time. And before we made dietary changes, he had really bad eczema. And I knew he was itching his scalp, but I, he had had cradle cap really bad. I just thought it was an outbreak of eczema. So I thought nothing of it. And my niece, who has very long hair and was traumatized by treatment after treatment after treatment, trying to get rid of lice, she comes to me like almost crying because she thought it was like a bad thing. And she's like, auntie, I think he has lice. And I was like, no, honey, he's just got eczema. And then I look at his hair. I mean, his hair was in motion. He was so infected. Like, I don't know how I miss this. He had pretty short hair. So I just assumed it was eczema. When I looked closely, there was so much lice that it looked like his his hair was like moving like water. I was appalled. I was so horrified. <laughs> Luckily, he has fine hair. So it was easy to, tra- you know, I just did the over-the-counter treatment. But I didn't detect it because I didn't get it. I had no hair. <laughs> so I thought that was always so funny. Like, now, even with the mom statistic, 
can we just go back really quick and sorry if I'm jumping around for you, but let's talk about the like kids not going home because now the whole class got lice. And of course there was one little girl with like kind of like thick, thick hair. And she was definitely, we called her the weakest link. And the mom was like, not always on the ball, you know? And we knew she kept kind of circulating it. And so when I first heard that kids weren't being sent home from school for lice, I was like, oh, that's not cool. But now you're saying your mentor was the one who was in charge of that. And now it makes a lot more sense knowing that. But doesn't that still recirculate? And so like you're kind of having to go to your salon over and over again, no? So people that come to my salon have learned how to check for lice on their own. Okay. In school, since the pandemic and we're all back and we're not distanced anymore, schools are less likely to even check for lice. The disconnect there is they're not giving parents accurate information and good action to check and know what they're looking for. So when, let's say the school nurse in years ago or hopefully still now some places, the class comes down to the school nurse to check. She's got to check each student to see if there's lice. Mm -hmm. She's only going to find the obvious cases. The cases, like you said, where you can see it, it's moving around. Head lice is designed by nature to not be seen or felt. So when somebody calls me and they say they feel bugs crawling around their head, I know it's psychosomatic. I also know how real it feels because I experienced it. Mm -hmm. So I never, I completely respect how they feel, but I also know that a person is itchy because they have an allergic reaction to the bug bite. They're not itchy because the lice are there. That tracks because my son had eczema, so he probably had the allergies. I was like, he was itchy. I remember that. Oh, okay. So So, really, so lice aren't itchy unless you're having a reaction. And not everybody has a reaction. And in many cases, people do get a reaction, but it can take five, six, up to eight weeks from exposure to begin to feel itchy. Hmm. And if you're a person that takes allergy medicine, you may never get it. Never feel it. Whoa. Right. So in the reality is we're waiting for somebody to show signs that they might have head lice. And then it could take forever to say, okay, now you're really scratching your head. Because that it makes so much sense because I'm thinking, how does the whole class have lice and the teacher never picked up on this? Because I'm picturing like the whole class like scratching their head. But if, you know, most people don't feel, oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. So this backtracks to the best. I'm the center for lice control. I want people to control lice effectively. And they sell products where you spray stuff in your hair. You can wash your hair. There's conditioners. There's oils. They're all, to me, kind of taking advantage of the fear of getting lice. Mm. Because if the aroma works, it's only going to work as long as the aroma is strong enough. Right. That doesn't last very long. And I say that because I have treated so many people or have talked to people on my hotline that all they use is fairy tales or other products that are preventative products. Oh, is, um, that, a, is that a brand? It is a brand. Okay. I thought it was like another word for old wives tale. <laughs> it isn't a fairy tale. So it, it's a great name for that because it does. To me, it's a fairy tale. And I tell people, buy it if you like the aroma of it. Or if you like the detangling properties that it has, or you love the way what you wash, you know, cleans your hair, don't buy it and expect to not get lice. Okay. And people that do use preventative products and say, oh, well, we never got head lice when we were in preschool. We never got head lice when we were in elementary school. Now they're middle school or high school students. We use that. We never got it. That must have worked. You got lucky. Yeah. But let me ask you something. So I remember because I used to run before I was like the queen of crap. I ran a secondhand kid store and I knew all the moms, you know? And so like I knew in Providence, Rhode Island, when there was like a kind of outbreak at a school of lice. And many of my black friends said that black people tend not to get lice because they're treating their hair with oil very often, you know? And so their hair was really slick. Is that your experience as well? So there is truth to that. That is the only real preventative 
Okay. And if you think of it, I mean, physiologically, if the hair is greasy enough, the female louse will lay her knit, but it won't stick. Stick. Okay. So they can get lice. Yes. But the knits won't stick if their hair is freshly oiled. Right. So when you have very frizzy, kinky, nappy hair, it's very, very dry, which is why they put oil on so their hair doesn't break and their scalp isn't itchy. However, you have to reapply and reapply and reapply because it's constantly being absorbed. So if it's oily enough, then yes, that's the only topical preventative. For me, teaching families, teaching the clients that come into my salon and my videos that I have online, we're putting more up soon. The best and only way to find lice early enough before a person is contagious Mm -hmm. is to do a combing head check. Okay. And that's just the typical one the nurse used to do. The nurse? 40 years ago. (laughs) Right. Well, some nurses use, they say chopstick. Some nurses use tongue depressors. We go to overnight camps and I train services to go into overnight camps to, you know, first day of camp, after visiting day, before they go home kind of thing. Yeah. And we're using tongue depressors. We can't comb four or 500 kids in three hours before lunchtime. (laughs) Right, right, right. Um, So I train my staff to be very careful to look. But if it's a very early case, we can miss it. The school nurse, back to poor school nurse, that this is a thankless job, you know, because she doesn't want to find it. Because if she does find it, she's got to call a parent. And now the parents freaked out and upset, and whatever comes with that, however a person reacts. And then the school nurse sends them home to treat with an over-the-counter product that is way less effective than it used to be. And in three weeks or next week or a month, there's more cases. So my soapbox of all this is that we should not leave it to the school nurse to be responsible. Head lace is not coming from school. It's coming from other people that have it, whether it's in school or on a play date or at the playground or at whatever activity you do. People learn how to do that combing head check and they know what they're looking for and they understand that there's that grace period from exposure to 14 to 20 days where you're not contagious yet. Okay. Then it's a much better process to stop these outbreaks from running rampant in a classroom. Yeah, like what if nobody does anything? Would it get worse? Would it just be an outbreak or would it fizzle on its own at some point? It will not go away by itself. It's a parasite. Okay. So you said you looked down at your son's head and it was crawling. Yeah. So if you think about it, Medusa Mm -hmm. is a mythological. She's also, there's a, a question as to whether or not she is what people used to look like that had headlights. Oh, okay. It doesn't go away. I mean, head lice is not something that started five years ago, 10 years ago. Right. It's been around forever. And there are knit combs in tombs. And oh, really? Cleopatra had a golden knit comb. Okay. So, you know. Not it's, going it's, anywhere. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. But if we understand it better, we have a better opportunity to prevent it. And then there's just less lice. I think too, like just, I mean, my mind's blown with like, yes, it's related to connection and sweetness. And I think just going that completely blew any stigmatization that was in my head about it, you know, like, yeah, that's true. Kids are together. And so I think just helping that because sometimes I think parents get frantic because of the stigma. Something I think we associate it with bed bugs. You know what I mean? Like it's somehow like the same little creepy things that are crawling. (laughs) And so I think that would go a long way in parents not panicking or not being afraid of that weak link or yeah, it might circulate again, but yeah. Monarch Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. If you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. So let's go to back to that weak link. Yeah. 
I eventually will see that weak link in my salon. Okay. These people are mortified. They yep. are defeated. They are the ones that can't get rid of it. And they're right. not the only ones. People that have treated over and over again are unfortunately too common, which is why the rise of head lice outbreaks have been on a tear in our schools and our playgroups and communities because the over-the-counter products, like I said earlier, used to work. They're way less effective. So people use them and whatever is still left over, there could still be adult live bugs, which makes a person still contagious because mm -hmm. it's that adult female who is the egg layer that mm -hmm. makes a person contagious. Okay. And that's it. We're also Why consuming products less less effective. Are they are they trying to cut back on the chemicals or have the lice gotten stronger? Well, in a sense they've gotten stronger, but it's more that they have evolved right. to protect themselves. Okay. So the method of permethrin or pyrethrins, they are a neurotoxin. And that's what's in most over the counter products okay. and in some prescription. It's the same thing that's in Raid that you spray in your house. Really? That says, if you get this on your skin, wash it off right away. So here we are dumping it on his heads. Head. Yeah. So that method, attacking the nervous system method of treating head lice has been around for 60, 70 years. In the early 70s, they started to see that the nits, so that killed the bugs and the nits. And your child's brain. <laughs> Way back when. And right. I explained a lot about my generation. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> so imagine the life cycles, seven to 10 days. So every seven to 10 days, there's a new generation. It takes seven to 10 days for the nits to hatch. Then it takes seven to 10 days for the bugs to mature, to lay new nits. Okay. Nits are A. Yep. So you apply permethrin on the scalp. It will, at this point, either kill some of the bugs, maybe kill all of the bugs, depending on where you're at in the cycle and how many times the strain that you were introduced to, how many times it has been treated by permethrin. So sometimes I have people in the salon, they come in with just eggs. Yep. But those eggs are going to hatch because permethrin does nothing to those eggs. Oh, geez. And then the combs that come in the kits, or if you go off and buy an extra comb that has metal teeth, yep. if it has a plastic handle, it's not going to work as well as the comb that I use. But here's the strikes against the over-the-counter products and why outbreaks are so prevalent now. They may kill bugs, they may not. We don't know until we find out. And then it does nothing to the eggs and the knit combs, they comb out adult bugs, but they can leave behind babies. Babies, yeah. And then the follow-up treatments are in seven to 10 days. Well, that's when this, the life cycle re- it's, yeah, I remember around. that with my son. I was like, this is like 0% chance of um, working just because it seemed like you have to catch it at the right time. You have to catch the adults and the eggs. Yeah, seems like a lot. Sometimes when I treat people, you know, they come in, they'll have a full-blown case of lice, but they'll also tell me that yesterday or two days ago, they sat for three hours and combed their kid out and they still see nits. That's why they called me. Yeah. And then I go to treat them and they have a full blown case. They could have a hundred bugs in their head. Plenty of adults. Meanwhile, in good faith, they treated their kid two days later after going to yeah. school, going to their activities, doing whatever. But also keep in mind that we're looking for an itchy scalp. People aren't always itchy yet. Right. So somebody could be innocently sharing it and not know. Right. But then that goes back to communication. Yeah. If you have it, you have to tell. Even if your kid is 17 and they're mortified. Yeah, you got to share the information. You yeah. have to say, even if the hardest person to communicate to is the person that is outwardly so freaked out by it, yeah. you're afraid to tell them. Yeah. But you got to rip the Band-Aid off. You got to say something. People don't want to say it and people don't want to hear it. But if you don't say something, everybody else is at risk. And then you did all this work to get rid of it for your kid. 
they could get it right back. Right back. <laughs> that was the thing about the weakest link. And I mean, in his class, and I, I, I feel bad saying that now because even I remember the little girl, she did have very curly hair and like thick, thick hair. And I, I remember thinking, we know she's the weakest link, but that hair, how are you even going to get all that, you know? So what can parents do? It sounds to me like a check, just nightly make it part of your bath routine or something. Just do a quick check. Is that the best? Here's the best way to do it. Over-the-counter Nick comb is fine for just doing head check. It okay. will be very frustrating to treat with, mm -hmm. but it's fine to do just head check. Okay. What I recommend, and I use the Knit Free Terminator comb, it's a metal handle with metal teeth. And Terminator. And is that like available everywhere? It's available on my website. It's available just about every professional knit picker uses the knit free terminator comb. And it's what I have in my, in my treatment kit. If you do, I created a head check for long hair and short hair to make it easy for people to do. For short hair, it's the Elvis. Okay. And for long hair, it's a peace of mind ponytail head check. Okay. And if you learn how to, after a bath or a shower, once a month, if you're in high school and you don't babysit kids, or twice a month, beginning of the month and the middle of the month, do a peace of mind ponytail head check with a knit comb. For just two times a month. That's it. That's Recognizing easy. the life cycle. If you're looking every day, an obsessed mom that has dealt with it or has fear of it, they're going to want to look, but you're going to lose your audience. <laughs> You're going to, yeah, you're going to drive yourself crazy. That's and your like kids are not going to want to sit there anymore. I talk about kids wiping their own butt and I'm like, don't get obsessive with it. Cause I, if they keep start getting weird, I get weird kids. They're like with mirrors on their butt. Like, I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, we, right. shockingly, we know mom as a demographic can get obsessive. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and that comes from a place of love. We want to yeah. make sure everything's perfect. Right. Yeah. And so if you're doing that head check, the goal is to find lice at a stage where there's no adult activity. Mm. And that's before a person is contagious. Okay. So real quick, let's talk about the life cycle so you have an idea okay. and how a person gets lice. So head-to-head -head contact, let's say, haven't seen, you know, somebody in a long time. I give them a hug. I have lice for my kid. I don't know I have lice for my kid. Give my friend a hug. We hug. And a bug. It's a, the adult female bug. She crawls on to the new host. I'm her original host. She hatched on me. Her digestive system developed on my chemistry. And it's a blood meal, right? Like a tick, yep. like a mosquito. It's a blood meal. She then transfers to a new host. Her job is to lay eggs. Right away, she lays nips in the perfect spot to incubate and hatch, which is a little different on everybody. Most of the time, it's three quarters of an inch to an inch from the scalp. Mm -hmm. But it can be a quarter of an inch from the scalp and it can be two to three inches from the scalp and still be viable. Mm -hmm. But she transfers, she lays nits right away. She has a few meals. She'll lay some more nits. She lays three to five nits twice a day and has about five or six blood meals. She's busy. <laughs> After a few meals, and she lays nits everywhere. The myth of having it behind your ears and the nape mm. of your neck is only concentrated when a person has an extreme infestation. Otherwise, it's typically around the temples and the top of the head. Mm -hmm. So she lays those nits, but she's going to die. But she left behind the nits. So a very sensitive person may be itchy for a day or two when mm -hmm. that happens because maybe they are getting that allergic reaction quickly. Sometimes when people have had lice, they know the itch right away. And they mm -hmm. could say, this is lice. I have that burning itch. And then they're lucky because they'll find it quick. However, now she dies. It takes seven to 10 days for those nits to hatch. And there can be anywhere from like three to 20 or 30 from that one female louse, depending on how hardy she was mm -hmm. and how long she lived. But it takes seven to 10 days for those knits to hatch. And they're teeny tiny. They're the same size as that teeny tiny knit when they hatch. They go through three stages of nymph before they become an adult. Once the adult female is fertilized by the male, 
She's fertile for life. Oof. And it's very incestuous. Every time she lays her nits, there's three to five nits. There's always one male bug. Okay. So you could have five nits, one male, four female. Mm. She could be responsible for up to 10 nits a day. Yeah, lace are worse than rabbits or mice, huh? They know how to have a good time. They're busy. (laughs) They're busy. So now you have, let's say, the nits have hatched. Mm -hmm. That sensitive person's going to get itchy again. Okay. Person that's not, they're not reacting yet, takes seven to 10 days for them to mature. Now I call that person contagious. Okay. Before that point, in the effort of lice control or understanding it, before that point, the person has evidence that they were exposed to lice because they have nits. Maybe they have just baby bugs at that point. But I don't call that a case of lice yet because they didn't have enough to share. They weren't Mm -hmm. at that stage. Right. Gotcha. So recognizing that if the nits hatch, they hatch in seven to 10 days and it takes seven to 10 days for them to mature. By doing a head check at the beginning of the month and the middle of the month, you have total control. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, you're going to find it before they shared it with anybody. I used to say it was the one head, one bed method because you have to run the comb through everybody's head Right. In the house, right. just to make sure there's no evidence on anybody else. But you most likely caught it before it was shared with anybody. Gotcha. If you assume that boys don't get lice, if you assume that somebody's not itchy and you don't check them, then you're setting yourself up for potential failure. Just because one person has a wild case of lice doesn't mean the whole house has it. Okay. And vice versa. Just because somebody has a little bit doesn't mean everybody else doesn't have a little bit. Could have been the little three-year-old cousin that came and hugged everybody and was all over everybody's and everybody got a little bit from her. Always that three-year-old cousin, man. (laughs) That space invader. (laughs) Oh, well, this has been completely mind-blowing and educational. Let's wrap this up, though. Can you tell parents, so you said you have a treatment kit. What's your website so everybody can go and get their their knit free terminator comb and <laughs> so i actually have a special deal for anybody that's listening to the podcast oh, cool. my website is centerforlicecontrol.com i sell product on my website i also sell it on amazon i okay. can't send it to you as fast as amazon so if you have <laughs> amazon go for you it you might not be able to get the, the discount right <laughs> i also am on walmart.com okay. as well and the professional lice treatment kit. So Kapow was what I called my product early on. Mm-hmm. It was like, you are a superhero. You can defeat this. You got this. But Kapow was a very difficult word to market for lice. If I yeah, was yeah. that man, that would be great. <laughs> right, right, right. So I tried to just be center for lice control products, but Amazon had my Kapow word in there. So we got to keep it there because that's where all my history is. So it's the Kapow Mm -hmm. Professional Lice Treatment Kit. It is designed for you to have everything I would use in my salon. And there's a QR code on every bottle and on the box of the kit to walk you through how to apply the product, how to do the comb out, how to do that piece of my ponytail head check or the Elvis, and to be able to take care of lice for your family and to oh, cool. have total control over it. So it's a $10 off of the professional lace treatment kit. Mm-hmm. And the code, and this is for Amazon, is CLC10, Center for Lice Control, CLC. Oh, perfect. $10 off. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Eileen. I will put all of that in the show notes so you guys can take advantage. I think this has been great. I love the twice a month. That sounds so doable without obsession. I love that the little space invaders, I really love the right reasons. I just, I love that. It just totally reframed it in my mind of like, yeah, we get this because we love each other. (laughs) And the reality is, and I started to say this earlier, if two or more kids have it, 90% of moms get lice. Yep. And when they come into the salon and I do a head check and I check one kid, I check another kid. 
mom is so devastated. First of all, how did she miss it? Just like you said, but until you know what it looks like. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Like now you see it, right? It's obvious. But by the time she gets in my chair, I have talked her up so much that only the sweetest people get lice that as a mom, she should have it. If she doesn't, she doesn't snuggle enough with her children. Oh. <laughs> so now the mom wishes she had, you know, it's so funny. They sit down, they're like, I was so terrified of this. Now I hope I have it. Right, exactly. <laughs> but with that said, she's not a bad mom if we're she doesn't so have it. She just got lucky. We're so strong and resilient and we're so easily devastated. It doesn't take much like, we're the non-sleepers. We're going, we're going. We never get any sleep. And then all of a sudden we're like, devastated by getting lice and then not having lice. And then what? I don't have it. And oh my God, that's hilarious. So, so it all comes from love. We want to do the best for our kids. We're full of love, us moms. That's great. Thank you so much, Eileen. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for having me. Yeah. A okay, lot of fun. guys. Thanks, thanks. As always, I appreciate you listening and I appreciate your patronage on Patreon. And as always, rock on. Okay, bye everyone. Just a reminder, if you need additional resources, I have Oh Crap Potty Training. I have Oh Crap, I Have a Toddler. Those books are available everywhere you want to find a book. (laughs) You can also go to my website, jamieglowacki.com, where you can book private sessions with me, buy any of my courses. Those are really geared towards potty training help. And also I'm on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook anymore and I'm not on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, jamie.glowacki, and I do a lot of lives and uh, usually posting a lot of good information. So those are extra resources for you. And as always, rock on. Have an awesome day.